All right, folks, we are doing Lily's homework today. This is a hacker rank problem, uh, medium difficulty. Uh, per usual, I'll be going over the problem, letting you have some time to do it on your own, and then going over my solution. So let's take it away. Um, whenever George asks Lily to hang out, she's busy doing homework. George wants to help her finish it faster, but he's in no he's in way over his head. Um, you can help George understand uh, Lily's homework um, so she can hang out. <laughs> That's such a long-winded way of introducing it. Um, consider an array of n distinct integers. George can swap any two elements of the array any number of times. An array is beautiful if the sum of the absolute value between the number and the number next to it, or I should say like behind it, um, uh, among oh, so for each number is minimal that is such a roundabout way of saying things um, given the array um, determine the determine and return the number the minimum number of swaps that should be performed in order to make the array beautiful uh, for example the array um, 7 15 12 and 3 one minimal array is 3 7 12 and 15 to get there George performed the following swaps where he swapped three and seven, and then seven and 15. So that was two swaps. This is minimal among the choice of beautiful arrays possible. Uh, so take some time on your own and we'll go over my solution afterwards. Um, so I have two functions for my solution, one which is the main function uh, that it's going to be called and the kind of the helper function, which is like the workhorse really, that will return the count. Um, and I have a flag here of the array and then the array, um, if I want to look at the reverse option. Um, so um, I'll mention that in, in a second. But um, the, the clincher here is kind of the fact that this wording is really overly complicated for what it needs to say. Um, so if I go up here, it says this uh, a array, an array is beautiful if the sum is this absolute value, yada, yada, yada. All that's saying is the array is sorted. That's it. Okay, so the array could be sorted forward or reverse. So it's, you know, the absolute value is basically saying it can be positive or negative, but minimal uh, for that. So you should be considering both the, the, the array, how, what steps does it take to get the array sorted forward or backward? Whichever one is the minimum is the one that you go with the minimum number of steps. So let's check that out. Um, so what I have here is uh, my, I have two uh, functions here, the main function and the helper function. The helper function is doing the, the real uh, brunt of the work here. But basically here I'm having the um, helper function take the array and I'm getting the forward count. And then I'm doing the same thing again, but I have a flag here called reverse equals true. And then I'm getting the, the reverse count basically. And I'm just going to return whichever number is the minimum of those two. And that is basically it for that. All right, let's check out the workhorse here. Um, all right, so first I'll note that um, I'm making a clone or a copy of the uh, incoming array. Uh, this is because I'll be doing some modifications directly to it. So I don't want to, I don't want to change the original basically. Um, all right, and I just want to give a quick example of like what this looks like just because there's a lot of deceptively confusing stuff maybe going on with like indices and values. So um, I'm just gonna, uh, while we're going through this, I'll have an, an example here. So let's assume for example, that we have an array coming in that is two, five, three, one in that order. Um, then uh, I wanna effectively sort that. And this is because this basically shows us what the answer looks like, which would be the sorted version. That could be, you know, forward or reverse. That's why I'm having this flag come in and it's basically being passed to the sorted function in Python. Um, this is just going to reverse the function one way or the other. Um, quick note that the time complexity is n log n for, for that sorting um, for sure. Um, all right, so um, we have now our sorted array, which is going to give us a kind of clue and uh, guidance in terms of what values belong where. And um, then I'm going to do something kind of weird uh, and maybe somewhat uh, tricky here, which is the fact that I want to be able to map the values to the index specifically. And we can do that at a, in a one to one way, because we're told early, early on, that the array has n distinct integers. So there really is a one for one relationship of what um, values belong at what index. 
uh, which is a lot, which allows us to have the power of doing this. So um, I'm going to create a dictionary called indices by values. That means the value is the key and the index is actually the value, which is kind of weird, but uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So uh, we're going to loop through the array and I'm going to use enumerate to get the index and the value. And I'm going to do exactly what I said. I'm going to take the dictionary value is the key and I is the, um, the index is now the value for that um, big O of N to loop through that. And here's kind of an example of what that looks like. So this indices by value for um, indices by values for this array that we came in with is going to say two is the key and it's at the one position or is at the zeroth position. So it's going to be a zero for that, for that mapping. So it's, two to zero, five, one, three, two, one, three, because that's the order we're told that's get, that's put in as. Uh, we'll be using this later to basically keep track of what values are where. Um, yeah, so um, so here we're now going to kind of just do this idea of swapping. Um, and, and it looks deceptively simple. I, I thought it was simpler before, but now I realize it's more complicated. So I think it helps to have like the example uh, that we'll be, we're going to go through some actual examples of what that looks like and actual values, concrete values. Um, here we have a counter that we're going to keep track of, the number of swaps. That is effectively our answer. So we need to keep track of that. We'll be returning this number in the end. Um, then we will go, we will loop through the array. This is the unsorted array. Uh, and that's going to be big O of n for sure. And we're going to keep track of this uh, using enumerate yet again with the index and the value. I'm going to call this the good index because that is the that's the value that um, that's the index that we're kind of looking at. And we're supposed to put the right value at that index, basically. So, for example, for the very first time that we go through this, the array, if I go back up here, the array looks like this. Two, five, three, one. So the first time we go through it, we get a two uh, as the value. So this the current value is two, and the good i is the zero. So it's just the index at the at the moment. Um, so this is zero. What we can do then is look up the sorted array and say, okay, what value is supposed to be at this index? And we just put in the good index in the sorted array, and we get the sorted value. And if we sort it properly, then we know that the one is supposed to be there, and we're getting that from here. Um, that could be the one or the five. If I if I reverse it, then it's a five. But anyway, so we have the sorted value is actually a one. So we know now that the one is actually supposed to be there. Um, what we can do then is check out the bad index. Um, and what we're going to do then is we're going to look at the value and see what index it currently is at. So this is the sorted value, the one that's supposed to be at that position. Are the two the same is the question that is basically being asked, that we're going to be asking. Um, and we are going to take our indices by value, put in the value, the sorted value, and get out the value that it's currently at. And lo and behold, the value for one is not where it's supposed to be. It's currently at three. So we need to swap the two. And that's what that's what we're gonna do. So the, the the way we check for that though is, hey, is this is this index the bad index and the good index are they the same? If they're the same, then it's the the value is properly in the right place. So we check are, is the, are the indices the same? If they are, then great, you don't need to do anything. They're already the, the that value is already where it's supposed to be. If it's not, then we do a swap. And uh, the swap looks like this. We're gonna take the current value. Uh, and put it and basically like put it in the spot that's bad. That's basically like reserving it for later. We're not going to use it now. We're going to like we're, we'll sort it. We'll put it. We'll swap it later. But we we, we currently don't want it in this position. We want to put the we want to put the right value in this current position. So we're going to take the current put the the position that's like the bad position and put our currently bad number there for later. And then we're going to say, okay, the good position, which is one we're at right now, let's put the sorted value in there. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. And that's, uh, here's some code for doing the exact same thing. It's a little bit more, I think, neater to do it in like one line. Um, but you can do the same thing in this line there. So what does this look like? So our array now is being changed. We're doing uh, changes to the array directly here. So our array looked like this before. Let's think about what it looks like now. So the position is um, the, the bad position. So let me just like copy this real quick. So this thing is the same. 
So the bad position is uh, is uh, three. So that's the way the one used to be. And we're going to put in the current value, which is the number two. So this got turned to two. And then the good position, which is the zero, that's currently where we're at, we put in the sorted value, which is supposed to be where the one is. So that became like that. And so you see, we, we're basically like, we're trying to recreate the sorting process um, using these like this swapping idea. So we swapped once. Um, we need to make sure we increment by one. So that's what I'll, I'll make sure to do here. Um, one small caveat here is that because we're using this this dictionary to look up where the indices are, we need to now update this. So this thing right here, this value, um, we need to say, uh, hey, you're now in that you're in that position now. The, the bad i, the bad the bad index. Um, so that's why we need to change our record um, just so that we're keeping up to date with that. Um, so what does that look like? Our current value is the two. So we're going to say two. You're no longer at zero. You are now at three. And uh, notice that we're not going to change this. Like we don't really need to. So we don't need to change it here um, because we're never going to see the one again. The one is properly in the right place here. We don't care about it. It's done. So we don't need to update this or remove it or do anything because it's never going to be seen again, basically. Um, and like I said, we're going to update our counter and we'll, we'll, we'll just keep doing this and we'll just eventually get to a number of swaps. Um, so um, eventually you'll get a number here and let's check this number out now. Let's run this. Uh, and keep in mind we're doing this thing, uh, so that worked. Uh, we're doing this thing where um, we're checking out the forward, uh, the, the, the array as if it was sorted you know, forward or reverse. So there's, it's possible that reversing it might actually be less uh, less swaps as well. So that's why you need to check both of them and then take the minimum of that. Uh, let's submit some code. All right, looks good. Okay, let's go over some uh, big O notation here. Um, so we see here that at least the, the main workhorse is um, doing this copy, which is technically big O uh, N on that. I believe, or is it? I think it might actually be more constant than I think. I might have to look this one up, but yeah, I'll put a question mark here. Um, but it's at most big O of n. Um, the reversing is definitely n log n. Uh, that is separate from this big O of n uh, loop, as well as this one. So in the end, the biggest time complexity here is big O of n log n. Um, and so that's this that's the workhorse here and this is happening twice so this is two times n log n but that's still in the end n log n uh, here so this one's also the same all right uh, so I uh, hope that was helpful uh, if you like this kind of content please make sure to like subscribe all the good things and I'll see you next time take care